This was your first World Championship tournament, any age group, any level. Um, what allowed you to make the jump to reach the tournament this year? And was there anything specific that started to work for you in your training this year in the past couple of years? Yeah, I mean, we have a really good um, room at the New Line Wrestling Club where I train. We have a lot of, you know, former Olympians and current world team members and stuff. So I think just being around a lot of really good wrestlers is going to breed really good wrestlers. So um, just using all of those resources, I think, has allowed me to continuously, you know, improve year to year. So, um, yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the Nittany Lion Wrestling mm -hmm. Club and those guys in the room there. Um, you wrestled at Penn State and a bunch of other guys. They're on the team. I mean, some of them didn't um, wrestle at Penn State, but they are wrestling for Nittany yeah. right now. Uh, what makes that culture so special in that room? And yeah, I mean, um, I think it starts with the people. You know, we have, uh, I've had the same coaches now for my entire adult life. They're just really good people and, you know, they look out for us. Um, off the mat and on the mat. Um, they're just really good guys you can go to with anything. And so I think they've built a level of um, trust. You know, it's, it's cliche to say, but it's like a family, right? Um, and then with that built-in trust, then we can go ahead and, you know, be vulnerable whenever we're actually training and, and improve on areas where um, we're not so great. So I think um, they've just built a very solid and sustainable culture um, where the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club and the uh, Penn State you know, college wrestling team can um, help each other improve and uh, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun and uh, everyone is there and has a common goal. Yeah, so a lot of your teammates um, at Penn State and you know, after college at Nittany Lion, uh, very successful guys, Kyle Steiner, David Taylor, uh, Thomas Gilman, all those guys. Uh, what do you think it is about, you know, being in that room, being around those guys that have seen so much success at the senior level that kind of, you know, help develop yeah. the guys in that room? And what do you think, you know, you've learned most from just being around that environment with all those guys that have such like high level experience, you know? Success? Sure. Well, um, yeah, I mean, the the uh, important word there would be experience because um, I think that that's you can't really replace. Um, the experience of wrestling, good wrestlers, the closest you can get is guys that have already done it and sharing that with you. So um, I think there's, you know, going from eighth grade into high school is, is a jump. Going from high school into college is a jump, and then college into senior level is always a jump. And so um, there's always kind of a uh, period where you're wrestling people at a higher level and, and getting that experience and getting used to it. So having those guys that already have those experiences and then being able to share that with me and with other guys on the team, I think it um, is uh, invaluable to the program. And, and it just doesn't, it doesn't just help guys on the freestyle circuit, but it helps the college guys as well um, whenever they're you know uh, able to train with the United Wrestling Club. And then let's go back to talking about World Championships sure. and that experience. Um, you had a great tournament, you know, uh, mm -hmm. fell in the semifinal or fell to the former champion, yeah. the Iranian. Um, just take us through your experience at the tournament throughout you know, all your matches and your experience. You, know, you guys had the uh, camp in Germany. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. then, you know, um, and then you were around people that have had that experience and been to world championships yes. before. Uh, so just take us through your kind of experience off the mat and then your experience like wrestling through the tournament. Yeah, so I uh, the year before the world championships were also in Serbia and I was a training partner for um, uh, Zane Rutherford out there. So I had already pretty much done the same exact trip before, just not as a competitor. Um, so I was, you know, familiar with where we were going to be and stuff. Um, it's really awesome that we get to go and train at the uh, Air Force Base in Germany. That's nice because, you know, you're essentially on U.S. soil um, and, you know, in a familiar area. Um, and we weren't there, you know, super long. And then uh, in Serbia, I always love Serbia. It's um, I really enjoy the culture and everything and the food and stuff, so um, it's a lot of fun. And I, I'm a history nerd as well, so I like to you know learn about the areas that we're in. Um, and then the actual uh, competition is uh, a lot of fun, and um, you know I wrestled in the World Championships before, so it was really cool. And, and actually, I only wrestled in you know a couple senior level tournaments um, in my senior level career, so um, it's just a, a, you know different. And you're wrestling guys that you've never wrestled before, which is my favorite. Uh, you know, in college, you're wrestling the same guys like five times. So, um, yeah, different. It's fun. 
and um, you know, traveling with good people is, is there's no better thing in the world. And then you said you you know you've had the experience being a training partner. Mm -hmm. uh, is your mindset kind of different? You know, as like going into it this year as like you're the, the guy that's yeah. gonna wrestle. You know, instead of you know, because you've had that experience. You had that experience with the guys. You know, saying yeah, for obviously great wrestler, great yeah. world champion. Uh, Yes, yeah, so like, what was your kind of mindset change, that shift that you had to make um, to, you know, helping others and then yeah. you being the guy that's going to... Well, I don't think it's a huge shift. I mean, it's, you're always helping others, whether you're competing or not. Um, and, you know, I think the main thing is um, you're trying to make sure that your body is, is ready to compete versus whenever you're a training partner, it's like, yeah, whatever anybody needs, like I'm doing it, and so you're very run down. So I'm more tired at the end of being uh, a trip of being a training partner than I am actually competing. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, e even as a training partner, you're still in like a competitive mindset because I want my guys that I'm there to train with to win, and so um, I almost get more nervous doing that. I, I would rather just go and wrestle, and I get less nervous for that kind of thing than whenever my friends wrestle. But um, yeah, just making sure that your body's ready and obviously, you know, there's weight management and stuff to do with wrestling. So um, that's all important, but um, the hot take, like mentally being a training partner is more stressful than actually competing because I have no control over what's going on out there. So. Yeah, what do you think sets the, this team, this 2023 team apart from the, from the rest of the world or team champions? Um, are there any differences that you noticed with this team that helped you? Um, yeah, I mean, we're the United States of America, extremely wealthy country. Everyone that lives here, even, you know, but we're all very fortunate. So um, I think that it's, um, you know, it should be surprising whenever we're having a lot of success. You know, obviously it's it's tough and there's um, countries that have had historical success like Russia and Iran. But um, yeah, I mean, we're the United States of America. We have all the resources we could want at our fingertips. So um, I think that you know, we should, you know, always be doing, you know, we should always be successful at this level. Um, and then obviously we have a bunch of guys um, from the D line wrestling club where I'm training, which is really cool. So for me, it, it was different because, you know, uh, it is Team USA, but I got a lot of guys that I train with every single day. Um, so really cool for me. Yeah, it's definitely a big, big yeah. advantage there. Uh, so six of the 10 world teamers this year were new to the squad. In, including yourself, uh, the results were pretty similar to in terms of the team title and the medal count. What do you think enables that to happen year after year? Yeah, um, I mean, kind of back to it, right? We got uh, we live in the United States of America. It's it's awesome. We have incredible training situations. Everyone does, and so um, it, that just creates a lot of depth at every single weight class. Um, and it's just. Um, just have incredible people involved at every level and, and you know we're at camp right now it's just a lot of really good wrestlers so um, yeah I think the, the fact that we have so many resources and people available to us is gonna I think we'll continue to build success um, as we go forward so I don't really see us you know going down anytime soon. And you mentioned depth uh, just mm -hmm. that the U.S. has in wrestling your weight class specifically especially uh, how does you know, having such stiff competition. You know, you wrestled Yanni at Final X, yeah. defeated his previous world medalist. It's yeah. huge for us um, as, you know, as a country, a Team USA and everything. How does, you know, having that depth in the U.S. help you develop as a wrestler, your style? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you have really tough competition, then, <laughs> you know, you're going to get really tough if you want to win. And I think that's kind of, you know, the story of USA wrestling right now. We got a lot of good guys. That, I mean, now if you look at uh, college wrestling, we got, like, high schoolers going to college opens and beating, you know, uh, all Americans in college. And so I think that the level of wrestling in the United States has just taken a huge leap. And I think it's going to continue to do that, uh, which is really cool. Um, yeah. I mean, iron sharpens iron. We just got a lot of tough guys and that's going to create a lot of other tough guys because they all want to beat each other. So. <laughs> and that's the advantage of living in the United States too, where, you know, we're, um, you know, no matter who you are, you got to fight for your spot on the team. So um, I think it's a good, it's a good system. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to see that you, you know, think would help you develop more a little bit um, as a wrestler on and off the mat? I don't know. I think um, that, you know, if 
if you want something, it's usually there for you. You just gotta go find it. So, um, I, and I think you know it's different for for everybody. So, um, you know, I have a pretty darn good situation. Um, if I need something, I can usually go find it. So. Well, let's go back to your semifinal match sure. at US Open. Let's just talk about you know uh, making the world team in that process. You wrestled Bill Bartley. Mm -hmm. You're very familiar with him. Yeah. You guys are friends. Yeah. Uh, one of your teammates, it was a very close match with a kind of a si different situation at the end there. Yeah. Um, what was going through your mind in that moment and, you know, that impact of, you know, that moment and those matches at the U.S. Open that had, you know, that affected your spot on the world team and that, you know, because if you, yeah. obviously, if that match went any differently, uh, will you would yeah. wrestle in the finals? Would sure. you wrestle the final? So kind of that one had a huge impact on like, the process of uh, making the world team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, you lose any match, you're, you're out, right? So, um, yeah, you got to win those matches. Um, Bo, obviously, he's wrestling in college right now, and um, we're very familiar with each other. We wrestle each other a lot. But, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, kind of my thoughts on that is, like, got to get the call right on the mat. Not fair to anybody if you don't have the call right on the mat. It's a weird situation. I understand that. But um, you got to have it right on the mat at the US Open. Yeah, definitely should be happening at that level especially so I agree with you there um, yeah and then you can beat at 65 kilos it is an Olympic weight class you know you're part of the process of qualifying that weight for the Olympic year uh, what are your next like few months of like you know going into your next few you know weeks and months of training look like heading into that continental one being a part of that yeah. process of qualifying the spot yeah um, you know we're it's kind of business as usual, right? We're training, we're, we're uh, improving, um, looking at some of the areas that we were good in and, and doubling down on those, and then areas where um, you know we have uh, ways to go and working on those areas. So, um, you know, it's the nice part about being a wrestler at this point in your career is you've done it your whole life, so you don't got to think too much about it. You know, you just kind of keep going through the process and, and enjoy it while you go. Yeah, and then just like, your mentality of, you know, you're one of those guys that has, like, strong mentality mm -hmm. going out on the mat, you know, you know what you got to do. Uh, it's kind of, you know, you know that you're, it's up to you out there. Mm -hmm. um, how did that develop? Like, did you did you think it's experiences that you shaped or do you think it's support from others that have helped you kind of get there to get that mindset? To um, yeah, I mean, all the above, probably, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, you got the combination of having good people around you, um, uh, the combination of your own experience in wrestling um, and then you know I, I would say you know for me you know faith a lot um, so just kind of that identity you build as a person is, is going to be um, apparent whenever you're you know out wrestling on the mat which is it's a very personal sport mm -hmm. so your identity as a person is going to come out one way or another and then you talked about your support system your success yeah um, you have two brothers yeah both wrestle at Penn State uh, Talk about like you know growing up in a wrestling family. Not everybody you know has that yeah. support system and those. You know. Sure. Well, I don't even know if I'd call us a wrestling family. I was the first person in my family to wrestle, uh, but they both wrestled as we were growing up, so we became a wrestling family. Um, and yeah, it's it's cool um, having two brothers because you know you always got drill partners, um, so that's fun. And they're both wrestling in college right now, and you know they've been just as much as part of my journey as I have. So um, yeah, they're they're awesome guys and you know definitely my best teammates um, along with my parents <laughs> yeah always good to mention mm -hmm. uh, define your style for me a little bit how do you view yourself as a wrestler you know what are you looking for when you step on the mat what's your do you have a personal signature kind of style you're a very high paced yeah fast wrestler um everyone tells me i'm high paced but i don't know if i am or not um i don't know i just i guess i don't think too much about my style i am out there and i, I kind of you know, know what I'm capable of and what I'm not capable of. And so I try to keep it, you know, a match in my positions. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I try to wrestle hard. Um, I don't want to think about it too much. You know, think too much about a sport that you probably don't do as well. So uh, I just try to enjoy myself, have fun, and, and you know, wrestle in the areas I'm familiar with, I guess. Um, so we are in a little bit here, mm -hmm. as you know. Uh, what does that, what do the Olympics mean to you as a wrestler, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, 
it's really awesome. The Olympics are a cool event, obviously. Um, and you know, you watch the Olympics growing up, and it's really cool. And I think uh, every kid would be alive if he said he didn't kind of see himself, you know, competing for the United States. So, um, yeah, it's it's a cool opportunity. I, I can't say I ever saw myself um, as a kid being like actually being in a spot where you know it's it's a possibility to compete in the Olympics. But here I am. So um, uh, yeah, it's it's a cool opportunity, and you know, hopefully I can get it done. But um, either way, we're gonna have somebody representing the United States and they'll do a very great job. Was wrestling the, the Olympic sport for you as a kid or did you have another that you always watched? I, uh, what did I watch in the Olympics? I used to watch swimming whenever Michael Phelps was going and, and um, I think the other sport was gymnastics, right? And like these crazy sports. And we watch wrestling uh, sometimes. Oddly enough, well, I guess it wouldn't surprise everybody, but like the coverage of wrestling at the Olympics sucks. So it's really hard to watch. Um, all the other sports are on, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun to watch. I feel like um, uh, as a kid, I didn't watch as many sports because like I played sports all the time. So I was like, I do sports all day. Let's watch something else. But I, I enjoyed watching the Olympics for sure. It's, it's kind of special. Uh, I like the Winter Olympics more almost because I get to watch people do like flips and stuff on snowboards. I think that stuff is awesome. So the Olympics are, it, it's, it's really cool um, to just get exposure to like a lot of different sports and athletes that are um, at their elite levels um, all at one event. What other sports did you like to um, I played soccer for a year. I played basketball for a year. I sucked. I uh, played football a lot. Um, what else did I do? I think that's it. Most, I mean, most of our time was, was wrestling, but uh, I think the sport I played the most outside of wrestling was football. Um, and yeah, played soccer a little bit, so, but wrestling was, uh, it was the one where, you know, I'm not very coordinated, and so I, I don't, uh, wrestling required the least amount of coordination, so that, I guess, is why I stuck with it. <laughs> what do you enjoy most about it? About wrestling? Yeah. Uh, I just like the people, I think, um, uh, you know, where I train at the NOWC, it's, you know, I, I would say that I always tell people the only reason I'm still wrestling is because I enjoy who I'm around every day, right? Otherwise, I'd probably be doing something else. But um, I just really, whenever I walk into the room, you know, I, I got a smile on my face. I enjoy everyone. You know, uh, we have laughs and stuff, and it's just a, a good group of people that you can trust and you can enjoy life with. And so I think for me, that's, that's my favorite part about what I do. And then outside of wrestling? Yeah. You know, what does a day look like? What do you like to do for fun? Do you like reading? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a reader. Like I said, I'm a history nerd, so uh, I like to read. Um, I like, you know, anything that has to do with that kind of thing. I love traveling. So, you know, if I have a weekend off or something, I try to travel somewhere and, and you know, see things I haven't seen before. Um, yeah, I mean, um, otherwise, pretty dull life, I guess. <laughs> you know, while you're training, you end up resting a lot and, and trying to make sure that you're healthy. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just a, I'm a person who likes to travel and, and uh, see things that I haven't seen before. So. Best place you've gone, like, because of wrestling? Sure. And then best place you've gone outside of the sport, you know, just like um, a vacation or anything that you really wanted to see? I think because of wrestling, I like Serbia a lot. It's a, it's a cool spot. Um, actually, I, I would say Budapest, though, was... was um, maybe more my favorite. We were in Budapest and there's a lot of history in that city, so I really enjoyed that. Um, and then outside of wrestling, um, I went to, it'll be cliche, but I, I, we went to France and saw a lot of things in France and I really enjoyed that. We saw um, like the Palace of Versailles and stuff and I think that's just so cool. Um, spent like a week just like literally just walking around looking at things. So um, really awesome. France is cool. Um, trying to think of somewhere else I've been. I've been to a lot of places, but uh, those two stick out in my mind. Yeah. Anywhere you really want to go that you haven't been? Um, yeah, I think um, I'd like to go to um, Italy. I haven't been to Italy, oddly enough, even though I'm Italian, which no one can tell I'm Italian. Um, I want to go to Italy. I really like Germany. I've been there. Uh, and I'd also like to go to the Nordic countries. Um, I think those are really cool, um, and I haven't been to Asia before. I like to go to Japan, um, but I hopefully my goal is ho hopefully hit everywhere before I die. But that's getting expensive, so we'll see.
didn't talk about reading. Um, you do like to read, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, best book you've ever read? Best book I've ever read. That's a tough one. Um, it can be it can be favorite and then like best like actually best book. Sure. Um, hmm. Well, shout out to the Bible, I guess. But um, that is tough. I think um, Homer's Odyssey is like pretty cool. Like that's definitely a like one that will stand the test of time. Um, and then I guess one that I enjoyed. I don't know. Oh, uh, I read Chop with Carry Water, um, and that's a really like useful book, and it's a short read. Um, so I would say like if you're like pick a book to pick up and read in a week, you can do that one. It's a good one. Yeah, and then you know. Big social media guy. Um, Not so much. I hate social media. Do you, you have a good Twitter? You have a great Twitter. Well, I, I got I got kicked off my Twitter, and then I tried to log back in, and then I can't log back in because they won't answer my support request. So I guess I'm a Threads guy now. I don't know. Yeah, I was out of Twitter for about a year and a half. Yeah. So well, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do to get back into it. So I probably, I'm going to try to just delete my account because I don't want I don't want it if I can't do anything with it. So. You have some movie reviews on there. I have a lot of movie reviews. I'm a big, I like watching like films and, and thinking my thoughts. Cause I think most movies are not very good these days. So I compare them to the older movies I watch, but there's some good ones that come out. Any favorites, any recent favorite? And then do you have an all time favorite? You know, is any um, specific one that comes My all time favorite is Disney's original Mulan. I just really like that movie. Um, I watched it like over and over as a kid. Um, Recent movie that I liked, um, I watched this movie called Waiting for the Barbarians with uh, Johnny Depp, um, and it I don't I don't know if it was even in theaters or not, but it was really really good. Uh, it was one that wasn't as marketed and stuff, but that was a phenomenal movie. And then uh, the new Puss in Boots movie was really good. I liked that, um, and then. Uh, yeah, but I uh, like I was really excited for the new Napoleon movie, but I went and I saw it and I was like waiting for it to end. So I hate to be negative, but it was really bad. <laughs> I heard like the history wasn't was it was was the history there or was it just like the style I of the I mean it was like it, it deserves its own episode of Catfish if you watch the preview. Really? Well, it was just like like Napoleon. You think of like one of the greatest generals in the history of. Uh, the world, and that's just not what the movie was about. So I don't take your kids. Is what I'll say. Right? So. Yeah. And then uh, outside of wrestling, do you have a clothing brand. Yep. Talk a little bit about Kia. Sure. Um, yeah, well, Kia. It's um, a clothing brand I started right after college in 2022. Um, and uh, Kia, the word is a uh, thunder spirit. It's a Lakota word, and so. Um, I thought that was nice branding. You know, I'm a big believer that we all kind of have, you know, internal power and, you know, whatever your aspirations are, you can achieve them. And so um, that was kind of the uh, inspiration for the brand. And um, yeah, we have good quality um, workout and athleisure apparel. So uh, people can go check it out. It's uh, wakia.store, so W A K I M Y A N.store. And I think everything's like 30% off right now, so it's a good time.